those certifications, I just can't tell you guys that enough. This job is what you make it to be. If you want to be the best technician Amen, there brother. Is, Preach on. Well, you heard it there, folks. I got to put my two cents in this rant for Mr. Rust Belt, so check it out after this. Alright guys, so it's probably my second or third time watching uh, the Rust Belt Mechanics rant on things new technicians need to hear getting in this industry and I just got to put, I just got to mention a, a couple things, you know, on my end. My experience, things like that, <clears throat> he's absolutely right. You know, this industry is what you make of it. You know, obviously getting into this, you're not going to get a job making six figures right away. And you're not going to get into this and obviously have a, a full-blown tool collection of the tools you're going to need to know how to work on these cars right away. you got to put in the time. you got to have your schooling. you gotta have, you got to have the tools. you got to have the experience. you got to study. I mean, everything plays a part in order to make that kind of money in this industry. So, you know, a lot of those guys, you know, Larry from the corner bay that comes into the shop and he brings the shop morale down and he's telling you, you know, hey, hey, young, young buck, you know, you should get out of here while you can. You know, I've been doing this forever and I got nothing to show for it. And I, and I hate my life. Or, you know, obviously, Mr. Larry, you know, he didn't put in the time. You know, chances are he probably, he was probably more or less the DIY guy that just learned through experience and all that stuff. You got to love what you do. You know, you got, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you want people to listen, you should whisper. If you love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. So, I mean, that's, that's my mortality on it. So this shop, what I do here, the YouTube channel, it's not a job. It's not a career. I mean, it is a job and it is a career, but it's a lifestyle. You know, without this, there wouldn't be this. So, I mean, he, you got to make my points. I mean, it's coming into this, guys. You know, you could have, I get the same comments. You could have high hopes thinking, you know, hey, man, I could be a mechanic. I'm going to go to school, do a two-year UTI or wherever you end up going, whatever you end up doing, wherever you end up working, and you get that first paycheck, and you're like, oh, it's not like that. You know, even doctors aren't like that. You know, obviously, you want to make six figures guaranteed, go be a doctor, go to school for seven years, and pay all the money to schooling, and, you know, there's a ton of money involved in being a doctor or physician, and then maybe you can make six figures. That's after you start a practice or whatever hospital you work at if you end up getting it after paying taxes. So, you know, even doctors don't get into it making six figures. And they need a ton of schooling. Being a mechanic, I, I know mechanics don't even have a GED. And they're, they're a damn good mechanic at that. So you don't need college education, you don't need schooling, and you have a chance to make 70, 80, 90, $100,000 a year easily without, without even a high school diploma. You know, I recommend having a high school diploma and maybe some college experience before you go on to trade school, but, you know, what other job in industry that you could go in and, you know, make good money the first five or six years in it? You know, you find a good employer, and that's what it's mostly about. You know, you guys out there that, you know, hate your life or hate being a mechanic and, you know, you can't wait to retire or whatever, and you're not making the money you should think, you're not making the money you think you should be making, it might be your boss probably not you at all you know you're probably doing nothing wrong it's where you work so you know you gotta find the right boss you gotta find the right place something that fits you as a technician especially starting off find a good mentor or someone to learn off of that's willing to teach you to, how to do things the right way because there's nothing better than hands-on experience obviously there's schooling and all that stuff you get some hands-on experience but a lot of that's controlled case studies and things like that it's not until you get hit the real industry and see these real problems on these cars and everything starts coming naturally after that and a little bit of talk about the pay scale I mean obviously I've built my empire probably you know barely making forty fifty thousand dollars a year you know I've actually made I've made six figures before I became a shop owner for a few years but you know getting into it after five six seven years you know I wasn't making killer money but I'll tell you what, and this goes along with, with the tools you buy too. You know, yes, you don't have to buy Snap-on tools. You could buy any brand that you want, any brand that gets their job done the right way, correctly, 
any brand that you like of your preference and things, yes, I may like Snap-on and I may buy into Snap-on and all that stuff, but there's multiple reasons why I buy Snap-on. Obviously because I have stock in it, because I like my old Snap-on guy, because a lot of the stuff that Snap-on has is what I was looking for, you know, the way it looks, the color, I mean there's a lot more to it than just the name, Snap-on. I buy into Snap-on because tried and true, it's, it's always worked for me and it's something I've always wanted even when I was using Craftsman tools and all those other Harbor Freight tools and all that coming up. I mean, what do you think bought my box? What do you think bought my shop? What do you think made me my money the first couple years? They weren't all Snap-on. You know, I was working on these cars and I became who I am using Craftsman, Husky, Cobalt, whatever tools I could get my hands on at the time. So brand preference does not matter what kind of brand tools you buy. Everybody has, you know, everybody has a tool that floats their boat. Whether it's Mac, Maco, Cornwell, Snap-on, any of them, any of the truck brands, any of the store brands, Home Depot brands, Milwaukee, whatever you use, if it makes you money and you're happy having it and you could open your drawer and stare at it, that's all that matters. It makes you money. So buy what you like. But getting to the pay scale, obviously, you know, getting into it and working into the flat rate system, it's intimidating. It is. And sometimes it's frustrating. And I know a lot of the things, the pay scale, it is broken. You know, it sh there should be differences in it. And I know these dealership manufacturers sometimes don't pay enough into some of these jobs. And sometimes they overpay, especially when you have just a little bit of experience on these cars. I mean, if you're, you know, after a couple years, if, if you can't make money in the flat rate system, maybe this industry isn't for you. But if you love what you do and you feel you could put the time and learn it, you can make real money on it. I mean, I was getting paid the flat rate system. I was working for a shop probably over there. It, I was at the shop physically hourly, probably a little over 40 hours, easily booking 80, 70 hours a week, easily, easily. And the shop was busy. I mean, it all depends on the shop you work at and, you, and you know, the work you could produce and all that stuff. But you know, to be somewhere for 40 hours and get paid 80 hours, and anything over 40 hours was, you know, time and a half or double time, plus your commissions, plus any kind of incentives they gave you and things. Making $100,000 a year is really easy. You work at a busy shop 12 months a year. I mean, that's uh, plenty of time to get, uh, to get money in your pocket. So, and it's all in you and the effort you put in and the shop you work for. So it's out there. The money is there. This industry ain't going anywhere. These cars aren't going to fix themselves. It's going to be probably a long time before computers can replace mechanics, so computers can't tell what's wrong with cars yet. But they're going to need us mechanics for a long time, and there is a shortage of mechanics. So you young guys out there, you know, if you like this industry, I mean, this industry is calling. There's plenty of money out there. I guarantee a lot of these older guys, you know, when Larry retires and even, even some of the good guys out there that tell you to be a mechanic and tell you to follow your dreams and everything, you know, they're going to retire sooner or later. So it's up to you young guys to take over and, and keep working on these cars. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, for someone to sit there and say, you know, I don't, uh, I have other sources of income, you know, uh, I, I can't have a, a half a million dollar house and I can't own a shop and a toolbox on a mechanic salary, it, bull, bull, because I, I've done it. And there's other ways. It's not always about cash. Obviously, there's credit lines you could take out. You know, not to say I recommend it. Most, most of the things I've ever bought was cash. But obviously, buying a house, all you need is good credit. It's not about the money. It's not like I took a half a million dollars and went out and bought a house. No, I had a good worth ethic. I had a good credit report. I had a good, you know, I was responsible and I had a good source of income and I mean, I set goals. So, I mean, th that's how I say it. You know, anything's possible be becoming a mechanic. If you guys want to be a mechanic, a technician, whatever you guys want to be, I mean, follow your dreams. What you make of it is going to dictate what you get paid. So, obviously, you know, if, if you show more effort and, and put forth more drive and passion than the next guy, chances are you're going to move up the ranks just like I did, just like Rust Belt did, and you're going to end up making more money. Because through experience, through time, the cash is there. The money's there. There's boatloads of money out here for us. These cars break every day. Someone needs to fix them. So, but all right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. I just had to put in my two cents. It's out there, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm living proof of it. Obviously, I support my family. I support my business. I support my mortgage, my house, everything there on a mechanic salary. And I guarantee being a shop owner... It's my only source of income, minus the, 
you know, the YouTube candy bar money that they give me each month. You know, I'm able to buy a couple Snickers, maybe a lunch here and there. You know, that ain't that ain't supporting no toolbox payment. That ain't supporting no tool payment. That ain't supporting no mortgage. So, you know, being a mechanic, my only source of income, and you guys watch my videos, you guys see what I have. The videos show it. The videos prove it. I'm a mechanic before I'm a shop owner on a mechanic salary, and I actually pay myself less now than I did when I was just a normal mechanic working for an employer. So that's my two cents, guys. Russ Belt made a couple good points. You can check out his video here if you guys want to check him out. Great dude. Made a lot of great points if you guys haven't seen that video. But had to give my two cents. Young techs out there, this industry needs you. There's a calling for good technicians that have drive and passion and everything else. Learn from who you can learn from. Do what you can do. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. But if it is, you'll find a drive, you'll find a passion. It will become a lifestyle like it has for me, my wife, my family. Without being a mechanic, there wouldn't be me. So I am who I am. I am a mechanic, and I make damn good money. So if you guys uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out. Boom.